There was a workshop for women in AI, and there was a workshop for black in AI, and there was a workshop for Latin in AI, and there was a workshop for queer in AI. And um, here we have one session with one courageous dude, um, three women, two redheads in one session. If you look at this session, uh, you think the yeah, distribution is different. So uh, Idan works on Q&A, and let's hear about your work. Thank you. Okay, can you hear? Yes. So in this talk, I'm going to present our work for attention for vision and language. The work was done with uh, Tamir Hazan from the Technion and Alexander Schwing from UIUC. And the work is based on two papers we published in CVPR, Factor Graph Attention and a simple baseline for audiovisual cinema. Okay, so what is the motivation behind our work? So first of all, many tasks involve multimodality. It means that we have both vision and uh, language as input, and we want to predict something. In the case of uh, visual question answering, we want to give in an image and a question, answer it. So, for example, the first question is what animal is in the cage, and we want to predict sheep. And in the second example, the question is how many feet is the child standing on, and the answer is one. So, when we look on a question, what animal is in the cage, the second motivation for our work is the need of attention. So to answer the question, what we would want to do is to concentrate on the sheep and also highlight the relevant words in the question. In this case, the attention chose to highlight the word animal. Another motivation is the fact that question matters. It means that when we change the question, we want the attention over the image to change. So when the question is going to be what color is a plastic container, we want the attention to look on the plastic container. So let's define attention. So the attention equation is actually a weighted sum. So when we are giving a representation for an image, usually we'll have uh, several regions, and each region represented as a vector. And what we would want to do in attention is to generate some sort of belief how much this region is important. When we have this belief, we can use a weighted sum and get the attended vector, AI, uh, that represents all the important regions in the image. So how do we infer this attention belief? So what we uh, chose is to have three terms. The first term talks about entity information. It means that when we are given a region, we want to understand how important this region is without taking into account the other utility, let's say the question. Uh, in the second term, we have the self-message. It means how well this region interacts with other regions in the image. And the last term, the question to image message, talks about the interaction of a region with the words in the question. Another thing to notice is that we have trainable weights for each term, allow the model to learn how to calibrate the importance of each term. Okay, so we begin by uh, looking at utilities. Utilities is what we define as different parts of available data. And in our case, we have uh, one utility is the question, uh, which contains entities, uh, which are words. Each word is a vector. And the image is another utility. And the entities in this case are the image regions. Again, we are, giving, we are having for each region uh, a representing vector. So the first thing we want to infer, to calculate is the entity information. And as we mentioned, it doesn't take into account the other utilities. So it means that when we want to calculate the entity information of a region, we only need to look on the vector that represented this region. So in this case, we have an MLP that taking this uh, vector and reduces it to a single score using a two-layer and a non-linearity in between. And that's it. We have a trainable weight, a capital VI, and VI. So when we visualize the entity information, 
it actually tells us what are the important areas in the image without uh, looking across the entire data set because it doesn't take into account the question at all. Uh, this actually will allow us to reveal biases uh, since we can ask ourselves why we didn't uh, ask questions about the blue areas. Maybe we can add questions that ask uh, about those areas. Next, we are going to describe the entity interaction. And the question is how we capture modality interactions. So to do that, we define vector similarity, uh, which is simply a dot product. So if we are looking at the region in the image and a representation of a world in the question, the dot product can give us the score for interaction between the, this region and the world. And we also add the weights to embed them to a similar embedding space. So we have LQ and RI alternable weights. We embed the region and the world, and then we apply the dot product and normalize to have a cosine similarity. Now that we can define interaction, we can look on similarity metrics between the image and the question, and then define message from question to image. That means that when we want to understand how much the question affects the image, we have a weighted sum that sum the entire uh, the interactions for each region with all the words. This gives us score for each region uh, that tells us how well it interacts with the words. Um, next, let's have the animation. Uh, we can do a very similar thing by uh, aggregating the their roles and getting score for, from the image to the questions. And when we visualize the messages, you can see that now the important areas uh, that correlate with the words are actually highlighted. So in the case of what animal is in the cage, the message actually tells us that the face of the sheep is the important area. In the case of the plastic container, we can see that the plastic container got most of the potential. Lastly, we also add a term about self-similarity metrics, which means the interactions of regions with, and with different regions. And this is very similar to the previous idea. So to summarize, when we are giving an image and a question, what we'll do, we'll infer the amount of belief for each region and each uh, word in the question using the equation that we just described. And in the end, we'll calculate the attended uh, representation using a weighted sum. And this is uh, how it looks like. So we have the entity information on the left, the message from the question to I, which means how much each region uh, correlates with the word in the question. Unless we have the final belief that you can look see it looks the best, so it means that we need all the component to get uh, the accurate belief. So this allowed us to get a very strong VQA baseline, which was state of the art back then, and we presented it in IP17. So in, the, in the, our recent work, we discussed visual dialogue, and it was published in Factor Graph Attention. And the idea in visual dialogue is that we have many utilities now. So it means we, have, we also have question and an image, but now we also have an history of interaction, and we also have the caption. And just looking at the history of interactions, we understand that we need to generate attention for each question and each answer in the history. And we have 10 history interactions. And this is quite hard. Uh, in addition, we also got a set of possible answers. 100 of them, and in our case, we also choose to attend to the set of possible answers. So it means we'll attend to the most important uh, answers in the set. So to do that, we define the factor graph attention, which each utility is actually represented as a node, and we have factor that model the information and interactions between the entities of the different utilities. 
And now we can aggregate information from utilities which are neighbors in the graph. So the messages are actually exactly the same. We again have a generalization with weight. And the belief now needs to take into account the set of utilities. So now when we want to infer the belief of I, we need to take the local information and also the messages from the entire set of utilities. Something to take into account when we aggregate that information from different utilities, we had to use batch normalization to normalize the mean and the variance of the different interactions. Another trick that we use is to share weights of uh, similar utilities. So in the case of a question in the history and answer in the history, we actually don't expect the attention to behave that different. And we share the LQ and RI weights in, uh, in our uh, interaction uh, equation. This solution allows us to get a state of the art for visual dialogue. And as you can see, it's very simple. We embedded using a convolutional uh, network the image and an LSTM for all the textual utilities. And we applied the factor graph attention to attend to all of them all together. And it got us an attended vector for each utility. Then we took all the attended uh, vectors and we concatenated them to each possible answer to generate a binary score for each one of them. Then we used this score to rank the important uh, answer, the correct answer. Another use case is audiovisual visual dialogue. So this is a newer data set, and we also achieved a state of the art there and presented our work in the paper, a simple baseline for audiovisual visual dialogue. So how do we cope with the complexity of a, of a video? So what we did is we split the video into four frames, and we looked on the audio, on embedding of the audio, and embedding of the question. Then we attended to each frame separately. And this was actually very easy for us because we have a tool that can allow us to attend to how many utilities that we want. And in this case, the four frames, we can treat them as just four utilities. We also attended to the representation of the audio and to the question. Uh, another thing that is interesting that if you look on the attention over the frames, you can see that each attention behaves slightly different. So the frames in the beginning and in the end, the attention is actually spread out, and the attention for the middle frames, actually, they chose to be much more specific. My, this might mean that in the data set, the middle frames uh, contain more valuable information. So this is how our architecture looked like. So again, we embed each frame uh, using VGG, and we use VGG to embed the audio, and LSTM for the textual input, and we attended to all of them using the factor graph attention, and uses the attended vector uh, to generate an answer. Okay, so let's just look on some results. So on visual dialogue, uh, we achieved state-of-the-art using uh, VGG embedding, which is quite impressive because the rest of them use ResNet. When we, we used more complicated uh, embedding for the image, you can actually see that on Recall at 1, the performance uh, jumped by more than 4%. Some ablation analysis shows that all the components in the attention were important, and when we remove the attention, the performance drops by 3%. We got similar uh, results when we evaluated the audiovisual cinema dialogue. Again, all the components were important, and without attention, the performance dropped significantly. Some interesting qualitative uh, results. So, when we look on the attention over the answers, what we found out is the the attention itself, usually the answer that got most of the attention correlates with the correct answer. That means that the attention was able to solve most of the complexity of the problem. So in the first question, when the question was, what is the child's expression, 
the attention gave most of it, most of the attention were given to the answer smile, which was the ground truth. And in the second case, when the question was, what is the child wearing? The answer shirt and pants got most of the attention. Some other cool things. So the attention over the history let us capture relevant terms. For instance, when it asks about, is, is this at the skateboard park? You can see that the skateboard uh, words get highlighted. Uh, it also can relieve co current issues when the question is, are they eating? It can uh, get information from the history to attend to the relevant uh, areas. Uh, more examples about explainability. So here we have uh, different questions. Uh, and we can see that when the question is what color is the bus, you can see that it looks on the bus. When the question is how the bikes on the street or sidewalk, it looks on the sidewalk. In the last question, the question was, what is the weather like? And we got the allegedly wrong answer, uh, cloudy, uh, because the ground truth what it looks sunny and warm. But when we look on the attention, we can see that it actually looks on the cloud. So it wasn't the wrong, uh, it wasn't really wrong. It was wrong for the right reasons. Last, uh, we try to look on uh, different models. So for VQA, hierarchical question Im image co-attention for visual question answering is also a method for attention. And we can see at, some, at one example that when the question what, what color are their coats, uh, we got the correct answer black and they got red. And the reason for it was because the attention looked on the red light. Okay, that's it. Thank you for your attention. And code is available on my GitHub. Thank you. Do we have any questions for the last speaker? Uh, actually, I, I have a question. Um, so just the example you gave for the clouds, the ground truth answer is wrong. What if instead of giving an answer, you just cared about the attention and just wanted to highlight the region where the answer is? Um, just show them, okay, this is where you could see where the weather is, and the viewer can look at the image and decide. Would you change anything if, if, just you, if you care just about the attention and not about the specific answer? So it's interesting because we could actually maybe provide some ground truth about the attention, but uh, in this case it's uh, interesting because we learned it unsupervised, and I think the results actually correlate quite well with what uh, the human uh, expects. And it's much easier to actually give uh, answers instead of uh, annotating the attention itself. Okay. Okay, thank you. Last chance? Yes. Okay, no. So we're going to thank all the speakers. Everybody wants to go out for coffee. Thank you for attending this session.